Today we are looking at a new way of compositing in Unreal. So essentially, you know, uh, I was working the football season here in the US, so I wasn't able to un attend Unreal Fest, but at Unreal Fest they announced and released Unreal 5.5 in preview. And so in Unreal 5.5 there is a new alpha holdout material or a media holdout material that sort of stops the tone mapper and motion blur and uh, anti-aliasing and all that stuff on meshes with that attached, which is amazing because now we no longer need to do that post-process trick I showed in my previous video. Now there is a new, better way to do compositing and it gives us things like what you can see here, where we have live reflections calculated on our objects. So it's really cool and I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. First thing we want to do is create a blank games project. I'm just going to hit go ahead and hit create. And start by turning on our plugins, the regulars like the Black Magic, the Media, IO, and Utilities, uh, Live Link, and Camera Calibration if you're doing the track camera, all that good stuff. So Black Magic. Uh, we also need to enable two project settings, so in the project settings. So the allow alpha through tone mapper is now just called alpha, or output alpha. Uh, so nice and easy, I'm going to go ahead and tick that. And then underneath it, it has a thing called support primitive alpha holdout in deferred renderer. And that is the new setting to enable those the uh, media materials. So we need to go ahead and tick that as well, and then we can restart. <coughs> All right, once that's restarted, I'm gonna go ahead and start by enabling my media input. So I'm gonna create a new media profile. I'm gonna select that. I'm gonna create a folder called media to keep it all uh, nice and tidy. And then I'm gonna call this MP underscore Blackmagic Duo 2. That's what I'm using at the moment. Um, and just do an external PCI enclosure. I'm gonna configure my proxies. I just want one in, one out, nice and easy. Now I'm going to hit the edit button here. Under media sources, I'm going to choose my black magic. Now they, uh, interestingly, it defaults to auto and you can't turn off auto now, which is kind of a relief actually, um, given the confusion that has caused me since 4.25. So that's nice to see that. I'm also going to enable 10 bit by UV, because why not? Um, if we're keeping in broadcast spec, then you want 10 bit in and out. Now on the Blackmagic Media output, I'm going to output fill 1080 progressive 5994, free run is fine. I'm also going to enable 10 bit YUV on that. And then I'm going to genlock my project. So Blackmagic SDI, genlock 1080-5994, apply, apply, apply. Perfect. Now I can test if it's working by simply dragging oops, my media bundle out like so. Uh-oh. It is still in preview, so I'm not... Hopefully that doesn't happen in the final release. All right, so I'm going to try that again. Drag my media bundle out. Didn't crash this time. So I can see my video output here. Perfect. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into a blank level and start to set up our compositing setup. Don't save that one. All right. In here, I'm just going to grab a cube and going to reset it to zero. And I'm just going to stretch it out a bit like so. All right. Now, I'm also going to create a materials folder, materials. And then I'm going to add a M underscore media material, like so. I'm going to get the bundle texture, which will be here. I'm going to plug it into the emissive. I'm going to change this from default lit to unlit. And I'm also going to grab a screen position. There it is, screen position. And what, all this, what this will do is basically map it, so it doesn't use the object UVs anymore, it just maps it directly to uh, the, UV, the viewport. 
So if I go to materials and select it, and then I can just drop it directly in there. And you can see as I move around, it stays the same, which is fine because then when I go all the way on it, it's going to fill the viewport. Be fine. Now you can notice though, we're still getting motion vectors, some things like motion blur, just that's not great. Um, so that's where this new alpha holdout comes in. On the cube, I can add a component called holdout and I get this holdout composite. If I add that, you'll notice the color changed a little bit to the original input, and I now have no motion vectors on it. Now, the video is not actually running. I need my media bundle in here as well, so I'm gonna grab it, bundles, just drop it. When I did the test run through of this tutorial, I did not get a single crash. So our video is playing, we can see the chatter with the um, gain on the camera. It's mapped to our viewport, it's not affecting the colors, and it's not being motion blurred or anything. Perfecto. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate it, which didn't work. Oh, whoops, it's duplicating the holdout. I'm gonna duplicate it, and make a rough representation of my room here. Now this is gonna be important for a feature I'm about to show you. All right. If I go ahead and add a sphere into my scene, and then bump it back to lit mode, you'll notice my sphere is actually receiving, oh, there's my, just put that over there. My sphere is receiving lighting from this because it is an object in the world, it is a mission, it is emitting light. So if I add a cinema camera, like so, go ahead and do all the usual stuff if you like. I'm just going to put it like that. So we're getting lighting information, which is really cool. So now, obviously, there's nothing behind it, it's just a black void. You know. So we're not getting any lighting from back there. And although I could duplicate this like that, and it does kind of light it up, it's just gonna be like a, a mirror reflection of what's behind the object. It's not gonna, you know, we don't have the information about what's there, unless you have a second camera, like a witness camera or something with a fisheye lens that you're also feeding into your scene, which could be a really cool use. So we also get, Reflection. So if I make a mirror ball, <coughs> uh, set metallic to one, roughness to like 0 0.1. There we go. Apply that and apply it to here, then you will see just like that. You get reflections. Again, nothing back there. And if I was to just duplicate this, put it back here. Now, like I can't put it here because then it covers up my camera. I can't see anything. So I need to uh, pull it back further, but we're just gonna get like a, a mirror image essentially of what's back there. And there is not a green screen behind this camera. There is me and all this that it doesn't see. However, we are getting, as I move it, you can see different reflections happen. If I was to move inside that camera frame, we would also see it, sadly I'm by myself, so I can't do that. And move it back and forward, we get, and that's why like a somewhat realistic representation of the room is important. Because it's like, I can't actually put the ball behind the table because this back wall is actually just a plane. I could potentially like duplicate this a bit and then shrink it down to sort of represent my table a bit better. Like so, like so. So now all of a sudden I can sort of push it there and then go behind the table. Like all that cool stuff. But this is like a much, oh, whoops a much more straightforward way of doing things than the previous tutorial I showed was. 
and you get all the cool features like these reflections and stuff in them, which is really, really cool. Of course, you can also just do virtual production media capture. I can do capture current viewport and have the output as well. Cool. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this is useful. This is really exciting stuff. Um, currently, it only works on mast and opaque materials. However, as soon as translucent materials are supported, then we could take the fill and the key from an ultimat, feed it in here, and basically do the inverse. Have a material of our actor or our talent on one of these holdout materials inside a 3D world and they would be casting reflections and shadows and all that stuff you would generally need the likes of zero density or pixotype to do. So really exciting when that comes along whenever that comes along. But thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this has been interesting, unique, um, you've enjoyed it. Bit simpler than the setup I showed prior, um, but that's fine.